So if we're going over all of this stuff, will be on your test tomorrow. So make sure that you guys are paying attention. You understand what this means. If I, like in number one, if I ask you to evaluate, what are they asking you to do? They're asking you to solve. They're asking you to take the numbers that I give you and plug them in for X. So when I evaluate where F is F of negative three, they want me to plug in negative three to all of the X's. So I have two times negative three squared plus four times negative three, right? Minus three. So we square first. What is negative three squared? Nine. nine and nine times two is 18. 18. What's four times negative three? Negative 12. negative 12 and then I have minus three. And now we work left to right. What's 18 minus 12? Six. six. So six minus three is? Three. So when I plug in negative three, I get out positive three, right? I'd like you to write it like that. If you don't, I'm not going to take off points, but that's the correct way to write it. So we're going to do the same thing again, but now what number? Zero. So F of zero. When I plug in zero, what do I get out? So, yep, because zero squared is zero times two is zero. Four times zero is zero. So F of zero, when I plug in zero, I get out negative three. Right? Now I'm going to do one. So f of 1, 2 times 1 squared plus 4 times 1 minus 3. What's 1 squared? 1 times 2? Two? 2. 2. What's 4 times 1? Four. So left to right, what's 2 plus 4? 6, and 6 minus 3 is? 3. three. Okay. Didn't mean for that to happen. <clears throat> All right, now I look at plug in f of 4. So when I plug in 4, what do I get out? I have 2 times 4 squared plus 4 times 4 minus 3, right? So what's 4 squared? 16, and 16 times 2 is 32, plus 4 times 4 is 16 minus 3. What's 32 plus 16? 48. How much? 48. Minus 3 is? So f of 4, when I plug in 4, I get out 45. Questions? You guys okay with evaluating? Okay. All right, when we're talking about domain, guys, there are three things that you have to be careful of when you're talking about domain. The first thing is you cannot have a variable in the denominator, right? The second thing is you cannot have a square root that has a variable underneath. And then if there's a square root in the denominator, meaning you have to figure out where there's restriction. So if I look at this first one, is there a variable in the denominator? No. Is there a square root we have to worry about? No. Can I plug in any negative number in the world for x and get some sort of an answer out? Yes. Can I plug in 0 and get some sort of an answer? Yes. Can I plug in a positive number and get some sort of an answer? Yes. So all real numbers work here. Your answer would be negative infinity to positive infinity. You can plug in any number you want. Everybody see that? Okay. If I look at the second one. What rule is being broken in number five, three? There's a variable in the denominator. So I have to figure out what number would make the denominator zero. So you would say 3x minus 4 cannot be zero. You could just say equal zero and figure it that way. <clears throat> but if I solve this, I'm going to add 4 to both sides, right? So 3x equals 4 divided by 3. The only number in the world that x cannot be is what? 4 over 3. Now, the way that you would write that in interval notation, it's any number in the world except 4 over 3. So I can use anything from negative infinity all the way up to 4 over 3. Can I use 4 thirds? No. So then I have a parenthesis. And then I have parenthesis 4 thirds to infinity. What goes in the middle? The union. Good. I can use any number in the world except for 4 thirds. You see that? Yes? Is it with me? Okay. What's the problem here? <clears throat> square root in the denominator. So my square root has to be greater than or equal to 0 or just greater than? Just greater than. Why is it just greater than? Because the denominator cannot be 0. Good. And it also cannot be a negative number, because can you take the square root of a negative number and get a real answer? 
No. So I'm going to square both sides. So I get x plus 6 greater than 0. Now what? Subtract 6. So x has to be greater than negative 6. If you guys can't remember how to write that interval notation, graph it real quick so you can see. Here's negative 6 and here's 0. What kind of a dot would I have at negative 6? Open. And where are all the numbers bigger than negative 6? To the right. So interval notation, how would I write that? Parentheses negative 6 to what? Positive infinity. Fantastic. Good job. Good, good, good. All right, what's the problem here? Variable in the denominator. So I have to say, okay, what will make my denominator zero? What kind of a problem is this, guys? Factor. What are the factors of negative 36? That multiply to give me 36, but add to give me 5. Positive 9, negative 4. Perfect. So my denominator can be any numbers in the world except for which two? x cannot be negative 9, x cannot be positive 4. Now, how do I write that? Parenthesis, negative infinity to what? To negative 9. Good. Negative 9 to? Good. Then what? Perfect. Very good, guys. You're telling me it can be anything in the world except for those two numbers. Yes, ma'am. Say it again. Because it can be anything in between negative 9 and 4. It could be 3, it could be negative 6, it could be 0, but it can't be negative 9 or 4. Because if we don't write that middle one, then we're only picking numbers up to negative 9 and then anything bigger than 4. So we have to include that middle piece. Good question. All right, <clears throat> talking about average rate of change. Guys, what is the average rate of change formula? Right? So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Good. So if I ask you for the average rate of change and I'm giving you two intervals to look at, what am I already giving you? I'm giving you the x of each point. So I'm going to use x is 3 and x is 6. So what do I have to do with 3 and what do I have to do with 6? i got to plug it in. So when I plug in 3, <clears throat> I have 1 third times 3 plus 4. Well, what happens with 1 third times 3? It cancels out, so I have 1 plus 4 is? Okay, there's my first point. Now, same thing, I'm going to say 1 third times 6 plus 4. What happens with 1 third times 6? 2. 2, and 2 plus 4 is? So there's my two points that I'm looking at. How do I find the average rate of change? Subtract the what? Okay, so I'm going to say 6 minus 5. Did I have to say 6 minus 5? Could I have said 5 minus 6? Yes. yes. Just make sure whatever you start with on the bottom, you start with on the top. So if I have 6 minus 5 on the bottom, what do I have on the top? 6 minus 3. So 6 minus 5 is 1. 6 minus 3 is 3. So my average rate of change between these two intervals is 1 over 3, or 1 third. You got me? OK. Same thing here. What are the two x's that you, I gave you? Negative 1 and positive 2. So what do I do with those two numbers? Plug them in. So I have negative 1 squared minus 3 times negative 1. What's negative 1 squared? 1. And what's negative 3 times negative 1? Positive 3. So I get what number? 4. Good. Same thing. I'm going to take 2 and square it minus 3 times 2. What's 2 squared? Minus 3 times 2 is? 6, so 4 minus 6 is? Negative 2. Negative two. So there's my two points. Now I'm going to find my average rate of change. So I'm going to say negative 2 minus 4 over what? Over 2. Negative 2 minus 4. Over 2 plus 1. 2 minus negative 1 or 2 plus 1. So I have negative 6 over 3, which gives me? Negative 2. Negative two. Questions? Real straightforward, guys. Nothing too crazy. <clears throat> what are my two x's here? Negative 2 and positive 2. So I'm going to say negative 4 times negative 2 squared minus 1. Work from the inside out. What's negative 2 squared? 4. What's 4 times negative 4? 
negative 16 minus 1 is negative 17. Now when I plug in positive 2, I have negative 4 times 2 squared minus 1. What's 2 squared? 4. 4 times negative 4 is negative 16 minus 1 is negative 17. All right. So how do I figure out my average rate of change? Subtract, Subtract what? Okay, so negative 17 minus a negative 17 over 2 minus negative 2. So what do I get on top? 0 over what do I get on the bottom? What's my average rate of change when I have 0 divided by a number? When 0 is in the numerator, what's my answer? When 0 is in the numerator, guys, what's the answer? Zero. When it's in the denominator, what's the answer? Undefined. You guys have to remember that. All righty. All right. <clears throat> you guys on this one, you're not actually going to have to graph this. You're going to have to pick the graph that goes with this problem. If I was going to graph this, I would distribute, correct? And I would have 1 half x minus 1. Agreed? What shape is this? It's a line. It's a straight line. Are there any domain restrictions when you have a straight line? No. I could plug in anything I want. So the domain for something like this would be negative infinity to what? Positive infinity. If you were going to have to pick this graph, where does the graph cross the y-axis? At negative 1. This is your y-intercept. And from that point, how do you get to the next point? 1 up and? 2 over, because that's the what? The slope. The slope. Good. So on that question, you're going to pick which graph goes with that line. Is it going to be or you have to No, you're going to have to solve it like that. Just the, ju the graph is multiple choice. But you're going to have to tell me the domain, so make sure you guys are on top of that. Like this one. If I work this out, y equals, I have negative 1 fourth x minus 6 over 4, which is what? 3 over 2? What is the direction of this line? Downward. downward. How do you know it's downward? Because it's negative. Where does it cross the y-axis? At negative 3 over 2. So you should be able to pick which line matches by the direction, where it crosses, and the slope. What's the slope here? Goes up 1 over 4, up 1 over 4. What's your domain since it's a line? Negative infinity to positive infinity. Good. Guys, it's going to say interval notation. If you tell me all real numbers, I'm marking it wrong. What about this one? y equals 2x minus 6. What's the domain? Can I use any negative number I want? Yes. Can I use any positive number I want? Can I use 0? Yeah. So I can put anything in here that I want. If I was going to pick the graph, where does this graph, where does this line cross the y-intercept? At negative 6. Great. And then what's my slope? Um, one up or two, up, one over. 2 up, 1 over. Good. Very good. All righty. Intervals of increase and decrease. Please, 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 please remember the most important thing that comes from this. Where do I look? for intervals of increase and decrease? x-axis. Write that down. x-axis. The y-axis does not matter. I told you guys the other day, just cross off the numbers on the y-axis so you don't even look. But if I have a graph like this, all right, does everybody see this? Do you see where the graph is increasing, decreasing, and staying constant? Okay. When we write our intervals of increase, decrease, and constant, we always use parentheses because you cannot increase and decrease simultaneously at the same time. You have to be doing one or the other. So if I look here, let's just take this nice, nice and easy. What is happening in this blue part of the line? It's going down. So that's called a what? Okay, so let's write our decrease right here. It's decreasing. So decrease, look on the x-axis. It's decreasing from where to where on the x-axis? 
from negative 4, just the x is all we care about, negative 4 to what? Negative two. To negative 2. Good. Everybody see that? Okay. Now, you can do the other decreases if you want. Do you see any other places where the graph is going down? Right over here, right? Agreed? So look, on the x-axis, where else is this decreasing? So from 4 to 5. That union says, hey, it's happening in two places. Increase. Let's look at our increases. That's where the graph is going which direction? Up. I see one right here. So on the x-axis, it's increasing from where to where on the x-axis? Zero to two. Agreed? All right. Where is it also increasing? From two to four. So, you could write that like this, or how else could I write it? Zero to four. It's increasing the whole time. It may change slightly the way it is increasing, but it's increasing the whole time. You could do zero to one, one to two, two to four, right? Zero to one, yeah, if you wanted to. Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's look at the last part. What is the last part of the graph doing? Staying constant. Guys, if there is no constant on the graph, what would you write? Would you just leave it blank? If there is no place on the graph that it's constant, do you just leave it blank? So I just assume you don't know how to answer that question. Or do you write something like none? Write none. I would write none, yes. So it's staying constant from where to where on the x-axis? Negative 2 to 0. And where else? Five to six, good. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. All right, I got another one. This graph is a little curvy, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. There's still places where it's increasing and decreasing. Okay, increasing, decreasing, and constant. So we'll say decrease, <coughs> increase, constant, right? Follow the graph. Starts on the left. What am I doing from here to this point? Mm -hmm. Increasing. So tell me what the interval is on the x-axis. Negative 6 to negative 3. Perfect. Negative 6 to negative 3. If you want to just go along and just follow the graph, that's fine. So what's going on from here to here? Going up or down? Mm -hmm. Decreasing. So it's decreasing from where on the x-axis to where on the x-axis. Oh, shoot, I put this in the wrong spot. Sorry, guys. This should be negative 6 to negative 3, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so where are we decreasing? From where to where? Negative 3 to 1. Good. And then what happens to my graph? I'm, going, I'm increasing again. So how do we say we're increasing again? Union from where to where on the x? 1 to 3. Perfect. And then what's happening? It's decreasing from, ah, I did it again, guys. Three to six. Don't make that mistake on your test. Now, constant, there is a line. That means that there needs to be an answer. Where is my graph constant? It's not, so you would say none. Make sense? You're going to have questions like this that they give you the graph. So look, you have the graph above, right? And they're going to say, can I erase this? Yeah. They're going to say, what is the value of y at the given x's? What's the value of y at the given x's? So f of negative 4. So what you're going to do... where x is negative 4. Do you guys see right here, x is negative 4. What is the y value? One. It's 1. So your answer would be 1. That's it. That's all you're doing is looking on the graph. They're telling you where to look. So I, f of 0, what is the value when I look at 0 on the x-axis, what is the y value? There you go. What about at where f is 5? How do I know 
looking at that dot, how do I know that that is an actual value? Because the dot is what? Closed. If there is two dots, say there's another dot here, and it went like that, and I said, what is f of 5? Would you guys tell me it's 1? Or would you tell me it's 3? Or would you tell me it's both of them? Why is it only 1 and it's not 3? Because 3 is open. Good. That's fine. That's fine. All right, so here, same thing. Same thing. I'm using this graph. F of negative 6. So go to negative 6 on the x-axis. What's the value of y? Yeah. 0. Negative 3. What is the value? When I go to x is negative 3, what's the value of y? Positive 3. And 1. So when I go to 1 on the x-axis, what is the value of y? Perfect. Does that make sense? Okay. Those are super easy, guys, so make sure you're on top of that. All right, and the last thing. Think, nope, just kidding. Two more things. Um, you're going to have a question like this. Average rate of change given a table. This is, all this is is a big XY chart. What does my X value represent? The years. What's the Y value? Number of people. So in the first question, average rate of change between 2000 and 2004. So my first point is 2000 comma something. The other one is 2000 comma 4. So in 2000, what was the population? 150. In 2004, what was the population? 525. How do you find the average rate of change, folks? So 525 minus what? 150 over 2004 minus 2000. What's 525 minus 150? 375 over what? 4. Does that break down? So there's your average rate of change over that interval. All right, the next one asks me between 2002 and 2009. So it's 2002 comma something, 2009 comma something. What is the population in 2002? 311. What's the population in 2009? 1100. So to figure out the average rate of change, we're going to say 1100 minus 311 over 2009 minus 2002. What is 1100 minus 311? 789 over 7. Does that simplify? No. If I asked you over these two intervals, is the population increasing or decreasing? What would you tell me? Why, why do you know just by looking at that fraction that it's increasing? Because the numbers are? No, oh, you can, but if I just gave you the average rate of change and said the average rate of change is this, is it growing or decreasing? Why? Because it's positive. Good. If it was a negative, then your population would be decreasing. All right. The last thing we're going to talk about, and then we're done. Maximum and minimums of graphs. When we read intervals of increase and decrease, we look at which axis again? The x. A maximum and minimum. Think about what that word means. Highest and lowest. What axis do you think we're going to look at for the highest or lowest? The y. In order to answer this question correctly on your test tomorrow, I need two things. It's going to say, just like it says here, state the minimum or maximum for each of the graph. I want you to tell me whether it's a minimum or a maximum and tell me where. That means I want the y value. So here, guys, is this the bottom of the graph or the top of the graph? So you would tell me it's a minimum. You can just say min. At, what's the only number that matters? The y. the y. What is the y value? Negative 4. Good. Max and min is on the y axis. You have to answer the question like that. So if I have something like this, you would tell me this is a yes. maximum. That's the highest that the graph is going to go. And it's at y equals, well, what does y equal there? Negative 2. Negative two. Good. No, just the y. Yeah, yeah. What does this graph have? It has a max and a min. The relative. Relative meaning just the bumps in, inside of our graph. But I have a minimum, a bottom, at y equals what? Good. And I have a maximum at y equals what? Good job.
If there's two, if there's visibly two. Do you see how there's only one low point of this graph? There's no, because the arrows, same thing here. Here, there's, a, there's two little bumps. All right, guys, that's it. If you know how to do this stuff on your test tomorrow, you'll be fine. It's not incredibly long. It's not incredibly difficult. You just really have to pay attention to, like, signs and, you know, silly, silly little mistakes that we make. If you are not here tomorrow, you have to take the test Friday or Monday of next week. Quarter's closing. I'm closing grades on Tuesday. We good?